Hi, I'm Femi OK, you're in the stream. Today, it was an uprising that started with a controversial change to Nicaragua's pension plan. But do recent protests mark the end for President Daniel Ortega and the Sandinistas? We are live right now on YouTube. I'm Malika Bilal. Social media has been alight with Nicaraguans in the country and diaspora, weighing in on what they see as the best way forward. There is lots to discuss today, and if you're following the protests, we want to hear from you. Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega, a one-time revolutionary hero, has been in power since 2006 and he spent the past decade consolidating his power across all branches of government. The proposed changes to social security programs may have just been the tipping point for thousands who are demanding that he steps down. Now we've been following the story very closely. Here's Malika with a look back at how things developed. Thousands of Nicaraguans sang their national anthem during protests against their president, Daniel Ortega, a 72-year-old former leftist guerrilla leader. And across the country and from the diaspora, 1.4 million have called to SOS Nicaragua. Confidencial, an independent multimedia publication in Nicaragua, has covered the growing unrest in a series of viral cartoons. Ortega's unpopular move to reform Nicaragua's Institute of Social Security System is cited as the initial trigger for the protests. The changes would have required workers to pay more and retirees to receive less. Ortega scrapped the changes after Nicaraguans took to the streets, but hundreds were injured and dozens died in the violent protests, marked by allegations that police used live ammunition. Many student protesters were detained and released after days of ongoing protests. They emerged from prison with shaved heads, as some accused the police of torturing them during their captivity. Protesters are now calling on Ortega to resign and his wife, Rosario Murillo, to step down as vice president. Her support of a multi-million dollar art project to beautify the capital with metal trees is just one of the reasons Nicaraguans feel the government has lost touch with its revolutionary ideals. Now at least 43 people are reported dead in the anti-government demonstrations. One of the dead was Angel Gajona. The Committee to Protect Journalists is calling on Nicaraguan authorities to conduct an investigation into the death of this journalist. And last week, the Roman Catholic Church agreed to mediate between Nicaragua's civil society and President Ortega. This is the moment when the people have to take control. No one owns Nicaragua. It is up to the Nicaraguan people to decide their story and their future. People power in Nicaragua is not new. Poet and essayist Soraya tweets, Ortega is using the same intimidation tactics of 30 plus years ago to silence a country. What he didn't take into account was the fact that half the country fought through this already and the other half grew up on our parents' stories of rising up. Well, it's a tense calm in Nicaragua as protesters stand their ground. On Monday, thousands marched in support of Ortega in the country's capital, Managua, where the president spoke. We will repeat, no to death, no to destruction, no to violence, no to savagery, yes to life, yes to dialogue, yes to work, yes to peace. Well, today we'll take a look at what lies ahead for the country and we want to hear from you. Femi? Thanks, Malika. So joining us, we have Matteo Hakin. He is a Nicaraguan historian and PhD candidate at Harvard University. Juan Carlos is a student protester from the Polytechnic University of Nicaragua. He's asked us to keep his identity hidden for safety concerns, which is why you cannot see his face right now. And Jeff Fale is the Vice President for Programs at the Washington Office on Latin America. That is a research advocacy and organization for human rights in the Americas. Hello, gentlemen. Okay. Welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, Juan Carlos, you've been protesting. Uh, what is it yeah. like today? 
What's the atmosphere yeah. like where you are? Well, you, you can you can definitely feel the tension on the streets. Um, it's um, right now is everyone's guess. We're waiting for this call, uh, so-called dialogue, to take place uh, by mid-May. Uh-huh. But it's um, it's uh, indeed yesterday. A lot of people f- are fearful for their lives. Um, a lot of uh, medical students uh, have rece- received threats, so they have they had to uh, leave Manawa somewhere else, place somewhere safe. So it's we can't sleep. Um, we can't sleep. We can't eat um, peacefully. We're just and we're just. Um, it's just been it's, it's just been crazy the last couple of weeks. Development. What's the risk that you're taking by going out into the streets, by saying that you want change? What's that personal risk that you're taking, Juan Carlos? I, um, I, can, uh, I can assure you that um, I can, uh, they can send me messages via, um, via WhatsApp or whatever just to uh, silence my voice, just to uh, death threats. And I might not, I'm a medical student, mm. and, and we might not be... Um, be part of the, um, we're linked, we're linked uh, by the public, um, okay, I'm sorry, um, so what, the, the government has threatened us, has threatened sure. the medical, has threatened uh, journalists and even yeah. um, teachers. So I have a lot of, a lot of friends that have, as I said, have been, have traveled outside Managua just to take refugee. Um, Mateo and Jeff, the one word I've heard described uh, that this, about this movement, the protest movement, is spontaneous. Yeah. Do, do you concur with that? <clears throat> Jeff and then Mateo. Yeah, so that's one of the really striking things about this, right? President uh, Ortega won the last elections. The elections were not fairly run or managed, but he did win them. He probably would have won them at the time if they were fairly managed. And this suddenly uh, we've seen this kind of spontaneous reaction that started with the Social Security and blew up broadly uh, into a huge movement that's calling for a fundamental change of government. That's a really big and important deal. And quickly to Juan Carlos's point, I mean, 40 to 60 people died last week in these protests. So he and protesters like him are taking a huge and very courageous risk. Mm. Matea. Yeah, well, I'll say that spontaneous is the right word. But we should note that while this moment of uprising and, and sadly of, of outrageous government repression was surprising in the sense that nobody could have predicted it happening at this moment in time in April 2018. This was also inevitable, given the insidious closing off over the past 10 years of all political avenues and spaces for people to vent their frustrations, to hold their leaders accountable, and to demand a change. And now what we see that's different now and what Juan Carlos showed is that Ortega has lost control of the streets and the people have lost their fear. I'm just wondering, uh, Juan Carlos, if you can tell us more about the students involved in the protests. Who are they? Medical students. Um, every, it, it, it's not just medical students, it's everyone. Everyone is it's donating. Everyone, um, you know, we have doctors, uh, dent, dentist students, we have lawyers, we have is everyone. This is not only, you know, the, the um, students that are on the streets fighting. It's everyone. It's the people. Mm-hmm. Can, I, can I just follow? Because to me, one of the things that's striking is the pension issue first hit retirees and workers. Mm-hmm. It's students who first came out. And I think if you look at the march you saw this past Monday, where there were reportedly, and you know, Juan Carlos, you can fill in, 125,000 people in the street. It's a very broad movement, and I think Mateo's right. It's a movement that isn't just responding to this week or last week, but to years in which political space is closed. Sure. So uh, picking up on that, I wanted to share two tweets here. Uh, one person writes in, the protests in Nicaragua at this point go beyond the social security reform, which our guests have noted, which is no longer on the table, according to President Ortega. Protesters throughout the country are outraged at the lack of freedom of speech and the murder of 63 civilians. This person says that number has been disputed. Some say higher, some say lower. But Don Sevilla on Twitter says, never after the Civil War have we had such a brutal state repression that left more than 60 students killed by the police and groups armed by the government. It just went from Thursday, April 20th, to Sunday, April 23rd. He calls it a massacre, and he says the government must leave ASAP. But starting off from 
protests against Social Security reforms. Matteo, did you see this happening, ballooning like this? And, and can you understand why it did? Well, let me just say that Massacre is absolutely right. The Ortega family, much like the Somoza family, which governed Nicaragua for 40 years during the 20th century, what they've promised to society has been stability. And in particular, to the business elite, economic policies which have been favorable to their interests. In exchange, they have demanded that their political power not be questioned in any way. But as the violent end of the Somoza dictatorship showed, and you see many people tweeting, alluding to the Somoza dictatorship, the problem with this model is that it might produce short-term stability, but it comes at the price of human and civil rights. And therefore, when you close off all political avenues for change, for holding your leaders accountable, then the only option, as it was in 1978-79, is to hit the streets and ultimately violence. And that's what you've seen here. The spark may have been the pension reforms. But in reality, while those reforms struck directly at Nicaraguan's wallets, that social crisis was combining with 10 years of pent-up frustrations with nepotism, corruption, censorship, mediocre governance. And thus, the real root of the protests, and of course, of the really disturbing government repression, has been this authoritarianism, and specifically, the Ortega family's blatant aspirations to perpetuate themselves in power. And therefore, there are a lot of items to discuss in the short term about the national dialogue in the short run. Mm. But in the long run, we all need to understand that there is no sustainable, realistic solution to this crisis that doesn't contemplate the end of the Ortega family's blatant aspirations to create a dynastic dictatorship Mateo, and that doesn't contemplate a return very, to democracy. It's very clear where you're coming from. What, what occurred to me as I was watching this is somebody who's following as an international citizen is that this seems almost Orwellian that you have yeah. um, uh, a freedom fighter who is overthrowing a authoritarian <laughs> regime and then so many years later here he is being accused of running an authoritarian regime. <laughs> I mean, there there are a lot of sad ironies in this, right? I mean, I don't personally... How did we get here, is my yeah, thought. Yeah, so how do we get... <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are sad ironies because Daniel Ortega came to power as one of a leadership group of a movement that sought to overthrow a dictatorship, establish democracy, and open the possibilities for social justice in Nicaragua. Um, the United States launched, you know, an ugly contra war to undermine him and everything about his government. Um, uh, through the 1990s, we saw a set of back and forth between more conservative sectors of the Nic kind of traditional Nicaraguan elite and the Sandinista leadership. Daniel Ortega got elected again in 2006 and has moved consistently <laughs> since then to consolidate power, naming his wife as the vice president. Um, establishing control over the Supreme Court, establishing control over the Electoral Commission, and then on the flip side, harassing uh, independent civil society groups, harassing journalists, and harassing the independent press. And so we wind up at a time where, as both Mateo and Juan Carlos have said, the space for doing for dialogue and for debate has closed. That's a timeline, that's Jeff. Seeing. That's not a reason why. What happened to him? What but happened you, to Daniel? Like if you think about yeah. Go ahead. If you, if you think course. about what's going on, I mean, we have been, we have uh, had 63 deaths in over three days. If you compare it even to Venezuela, which is 125 dead over the course of five months, this is massacre, as you said. We can't let that just pass by, you know. And, and, and there were there were there were um, there was this uh, this student, 15 year old, uh, named uh, Conrado. You know, he could have been saved, but. They, he got denied the possibility to go to a public hospital. They were attending, injured. Right. You know, yeah, and, and I, I, I understand. Do, do, gentlemen, let me just bring in Malika. She, she's bringing in a, a broader community as well. They have questions and thoughts for this conversation too. Well, it's like they are reading our guests' minds because Grisel here on Twitter says, there is so much of history repeating itself. 40 years ago on May 1st, 1978, Somoza convened the same forced protest to show that people were still loyal to him. 
Four months later came the bloody insurgency and the wars, leading to him finally fleeing in 79. And now Ortega is guilty of doing the same. But others on Twitter are broadening the blame. And they say it is not just Daniel Ortega, but also his wife uh, that they are uh, uh, that they think is are guilty of this. Johnny says during almost 40 years, they as a couple have created an environment where the population only has two options. Keep your fidelity to the government or live under fear. Juan Carlos, is that something that you can relate to? Would you agree with his statement? I agree completely. I agree completely. I mean, it's not only uh, Ortega and Murillo, though. You have to think about the uh, Supreme Court. You have to think about it's like this is a cancer that needs to wipe, be wiped out from the basis, from the foundations. Mm -hmm. We don't do anything just taking Ortega and Murillo. It's good. It's, it, I mean, it's good. But we need to think about the pillars, the foundations first, I think. Yeah, just to that, I mean, I think one of the things that important to think about is that it's pretty clear that the Ortega government um, formed an alliance with the traditional business elite of Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And one reason we've seen social peace in the last few years is because of that alliance. And what we're seeing now is new sectors saying it's not enough for Danielle mm. and Rosario and the business community to cut deals together. It's important to bring everybody into the picture. And I think that's yeah. an important and significant change. And both Jeff and Juan Carlos are, are, are pointing that in the long run, any dialogue which arises from this present crisis needs to be geared towards a return to democracy. Many people, I'm sure, will already be asking, OK, well, Daniel has been a strong leader. Who will, we, who will replace him? But the fact is, we don't need a benevolent version of Daniel Ortega or Rosario Murillo to replace them. What we need are the fundamentals, human rights, free elections, respect for civil liberties, and really to trust that Nicaraguan people can choose their own leaders going forward, not just the regime I, and its elite I interlocutors. Think uh, I think guess, it's important. I, I, can, I show, can I show this to you? Uh, Juan Carlos, we can't see you, but I, I know that you can see us. I'm just going to yeah. show you something, because it's, it's very strange. It's called the Tree of Life. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's sculptures that can be seen um, in parts of Nicaragua. All throughout Managua. Uh, yes. uh, in Managua. And I'm just going to scroll up, because some of these sculptures have been torn down. I'm just going to scroll yes, here. Correct. Here's one that's torn down here. And then another one. Tell us this story very briefly, because this has become the symbol of this latest protest. Do you want to explain, right. tell us why, and, and why people are annoyed with these sculptures? Because uh, the Tree of Life, how Rosario Burillo calls them, they cost $25,000. They take how, how much? away $25,000 each? each. Each. OK. And that's not counting the uh, electric bill. Yeah, electric bill is $1 million a year. OK. That's extraordinary. And, uh, OK. It is. So, um, and no one likes, likes them. I mean, it's, um, they just, she just imposed them on us. <laughs> they look beautiful, they though. I mean, one, one, one colors. Look, look at this. This is, this is a beautiful scene right here. But I, in the context of there being cutbacks for social programs, That's and right. then these, That's right. these amazing pieces of artwork go up, then there's a, definitely a disconnect, a little Marie Antoinette moment going on here. <laughs> Let's push things forward. <laughs> Um, well, earlier, Juan Carlos, you had mentioned that the pillars of the government and society need to come down. And so I want to take a look at what some Nicaraguans on social media are saying about that in particular. They're sharing their thoughts on the way forward. So take a look at this. This play on a Nintendo game scene, it shows the character Mario taking down the flag of the FSLN. That's Daniel Ortega's political party. But in addition to political reform, activists are also saying that they want justice. So Tim Rogers, he's a journalist based in Nicaragua, he shared the moment of silence that protesters took to honor those who died in demonstrations. Felix Maradiega is the executive director of a Nicaraguan think tank, and he wrote on Twitter, dictatorships, authoritarianism, all those vices of the evil politics of the past are evils that must be eradicated once and for all. This is not about wanting to change some ideologies for others. It's urgent to rethink the nation. So keeping that in mind, we asked Medardo Marena Saquera, he's a coordinator for the peasant movement in Nicaragua, for his thoughts. Creemos para nosotros el movimiento campesino que sí es importante participar en el diálogo. Lo que no confiamos es debido a la experiencia que tenemos nosotros, que el gobierno en la década de los 80 también se comprometió a, a respetar eh, los derechos de las personas de las cuales no ha cumplido. 
muchos tratados internacionales que firmó en ese entonces, pues creemos que hoy, ojalá que eh, hayan comisiones internacionales de derechos humanos, que esto se haga serio de manera formal y que pueda cumplir. Para nosotros es importante participar en el diálogo para buscar una salida, es que no, nosotros no queremos más derramamiento de sangre en este país, en este país ninguna muerte más, ningún herido más, por lo tanto estamos dispuestos a participar. So, Jeff, he says, we are willing to participate, but we don't have much trust. Now, we know the talks haven't actually officially begun. Right. Will they soon, and will they then include groups like his at the table? Right. I mean, I think that's really the fundamental question, right? The church announced that it would um, sponsor these talks. It would have the business community that said others. I think we're yet to see what others means. I know some students have been proposed and there's some debate. I'd actually like to hear what Juan Carlos has to say about that. The church also said, I, I and I think, have a okay, just really importantly, the church also said, yeah, yeah. Um, if we don't see results from this dialogue in a month, we'll walk away. And I think that's really important because of the quote you just heard, which is, you can dialogue forever and nothing can change. Mm -hmm. Juan Carlos? We, uh, we actually, the students, have um, a, a list of demands that we want from the government. And that, um, that saying about uh, involving the social uh, society, the, the farmers, uh, and everyone, it's one of them. Uh, and we need to, um, and we, we have, uh, it says, like, the end of repression, the campaigns of defamations throughout official media and the political perse persecution of social movements. And so it's a list about like a 15 points that we want to we want to adjourn in the in the dialogue. Um, and I want to point out this: you were talking about Orwellian. Um, mm. It's about this. Little, the little animal farm going on here. Yeah, but the Truth Commission, the government want to pass uh, something called the Truth Commission yep. that is presided over the president of the of the social um, the Supreme Court. Um, and it's about investigating their own crimes, right. mm. their own their own bloodshed. I, I mean, sorry, that's something it's, it's that good, has. It's going to be led by the president of the Supreme Court. Yes, that's, well, that's the it National wants. Assembly has proposed. Right. But it, uh, Juan Carlos is yeah. absolutely right. The government can't investigate yeah. itself <laughs> because over the right. past ten years, Ortega and Murillo, what they've done with all institutions, with the judiciary, with the security right. forces, is that they've turned them into private vehicles which are only loyal to them personally and whose orders they only follow uh, coming from the presidency. So that means that it is ludicrous to believe that the police and the Sandinista youth use lethal force against mm -hmm. protesters for several days without at least the knowledge and probably the order coming from the presidential couple. So they, they can't investigate themselves. And it also shows why right. we can't separate the demand for justice, which is unanimous, from the demand for Ortega and Murillo to step aside and hold elections, which is widespread. Let me just remind you, guests, the question that we started with, could this be the end of Daniel Ortega and the Sandinistas? This was you, uh, Mateo, in the New York Times a, a few days ago, the beginning of the end for Ortega. You asked the question, what is the answer from your perspective? Well, whether or not it's the beginning of the end right now, the fact is that the game has changed for mm. Ortega. Because as a couple of you all have noticed, Ortega long ago abandoned his leftist ideas, his politics. He used to cultivate support from workers' movements, peasants, progressive social movements, intellectuals. Sure. But as Jeff noted, more recently, Ortega has relied on tacit alliances uh, specifically with the traditional business elite. So, Mateo, I really want to go to Juan Carlos because he's right there on the ground. Juan Carlos, is this the end of Ortega? I, I definitely think it is, uh, to tell you the truth. Because? Yes. Because um, the people are awake now. The people are awake. They don't, they, they don't believe the, 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 um, the national media that is run by, by the Ortegas. Yeah. They don't... Now they, their eyes are open, and I think no matter what he says, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring the people down. This, this is a, I think this is the, end, the, the beginning of a revolution. Yeah. And that is Juan Carlos. He, his uh, identity is hidden, but he is a student protester in Managua, Nicaragua. Thank you, gentlemen. Malika. I'll end with this via YouTube Live. Divan says, I believe it will be very difficult to break the old ideology of the wealthy elite and the corrupt government and move forward. But I think Nicaragua has a feeling of progressive energy and they won't give up.
Gentlemen, I know there is so much more to say, but for now, thank you to Jeff, to Juan Carlos, to Mateo. We continue our conversation online using the hashtag AJStream. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.